Hello, hello, everyone at the North American Bear Center. Um, right now it is 1230, um, so we will be doing um, kind of an enrichment down front here with Holly Bear. So if you're at the center, um, come on down to the large windows or up on the deck, which is to the right of the windows. You will be able to see Holly Bear getting some treats right now. So um, usually we do this on every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12.30 here at the Bear Center. Um, this does uh, broadcast live onto our website as well. So um, if you're ever interested in tuning into this again later, you can do so then. Um, and welcome to those of you who might be um, online right now. My name is Natasha. I'm a biologist here at the Bear Center. Um, so down front now we have Holly and Lucky Bear. So um, you get the chance to see both of them um, up front here. So um, just to tell you a little bit about these two in case you don't know, um, Holly is the smaller one, um, closer to the brown box you see. Um, she is 10 years old and she's a female. Um, she is our oldest female here and she is the matriarch of the whole enclosure, so she runs the show around here. Now Lucky um, is the one with kind of a dirty butt um, or rear end and he's 16 years old and he is a male. Um, and he is our oldest bear here. Um, you also might be able to see Tasha Bear, um, who's in that smaller enclosure closure to the right uh, of the windows or to the deck here. Um, she is not able to access this two and a half area right now, um, just because her and Lucky do not get along. We're not sure why, um, but they just never have really um, clicked. So um, that's why she's separate. And these two are out in the two and a half acres. But Tasha does get along with Holly here. So the girls can go out together. Um, and Holly and Lucky can go out together. So at least everyone has a friend to play with. Now, um, as you can see, some of our um, awesome interns threw in um, some kind of funky looking toys in there for the bears. So um, this is what we call enrichment for them. Um, as you can see, Holly just kind of maneuvers those items. Um, we call the one that she's working on right now the donut. And then the other one is just kind of like a PVC log that is painted to look like a birch log. Um, and the bears will toss them around and um, maneuver them so that all those delicious treats fall out. So what's in those right now is a mixture of nuts, so a lot of like walnuts, hazelnuts, pecans, almonds, cashews, um, similar to a trail mix without the M&Ms. Um, they also might have some dried fruits in there. Our bears love dried apricots, dried pineapples, dried cranberries, um, and similar things to those. So. Um, this enrichment, um, why do we do it and why is it good for them? Um, it might be uh, similar or make more sense to you if you have active dogs at home or an active pet at home. Um, you really need to give animals who are um, really active and living in a captive environment something to change up um, their daily routine and just something to give them to think about. So, for example, um, if you've ever given your pet at home like a frozen treat or um, their food or their dinner or breakfast in like a puzzle feeder, that's pretty similar to what the bears have going on right now. So um, these kinds of um, toys or enrichment items force the bears um, to kind of put some thought into getting their food. Um, of course, if you don't offer anything like this or you don't change up their environment um, or do any sort of enrichment, um, it can happen in facilities like this or uh, just any captive environment, wild animals especially. Um, can um, develop a sort of psychosis. Um, so this uh, both is good for their mental health and it's also fun for us to watch because we do get to see some cool bear behaviors coming through. Some other um, forms of, of enrichment that we um, give our bears, um, a lot of times we do scent enrichment for them. So um, if you were here, here earlier, um, you might have seen Holly scratching on one of the trees out here. Um, the interns also um, drizzled some cedar wood oil on various trees, and I believe they put some in Tasha's enclosure as well. Um, that's just a scent that they like. Our bears really like the smell of cedar. They really like cinnamon and citronella. Um, and when they um, get a whiff of that, they usually will just scratch all over it, um, kind of like your dogs at home. If they smell something good to them, they'll roll around in it. Um, just to um, investigate and get it all over themselves. So that's what the bears are doing here. Uh, but another thing we like to do for our bears is just change up their environment every now and then um, to keep their lives interesting and to um, make it just a little different. So we'll shuffle around the logs in the pond sometimes. 
Uh, we'll arrange these logs that you see down front here in various ways. Um, you can see those carrots and other kinds of nuts and watermelon and such are in logs. Um, that would be considered enrichment as well because the bears have to maneuver it out of there and it forces them to have to look for their food like they would be doing out in the wild. So while Holly's eating out of that PVC tube over there, um, you might hear her crunching some nuts. Um, the bears are getting some uh, peanuts in the shell, it sounds like, um, over there. So um, bears actually have a really cool adaptation in their mouth. Um, they basically have a built-in nutcracker. So um, it's called the diastema. If you look at their skull, um, like we have inside, you would see they have a very large gap um, in their tooth line right behind their canines. Um, and that, again, is just a built-in nutcracker. So here our bears enjoy um, using that nutcracker on things like peanuts and hazelnuts that are in the shell. Uh, but out in the wild, bears will use that a lot to crack open acorns and hazelnuts. We have a lot of those growing up here in northern Minnesota. And as you can see, Holly um, cracks those nuts very um, quickly. Um, bears are really um, adapted for eating um, very well. Um, as you can see, our bears are pretty well fed here. But they do eat very quickly. This time of the year, the bears are really trying to put on some pounds uh, because, of course, hibernation is going to be soon. So um, ideally, um, wild bears and our bears here um, during this time, usually October, or not, excuse me, not October, uh, but August and September, they will be um, in a stage of their life called hyperphagia, which just is a fancy word for they need to eat a lot of food for hibernation, so they will ideally want to be eating about 20,000 calories a day, which is a crazy amount. Uh, but you need to go from about October to April um, without eating anything, so it's really not crazy. But um, the bears, again, are in that stage hyperphagia right now, uh, but come October here, the bears will be slowing down quite a bit more for hibernation. It's not really a drastic change, like we don't just see the bears anymore one day. Um, they will stop um, showing up for meals and they'll stop coming down front here a lot um, and they'll just physically slow down. They actually look like they're moving in slow motion um, come October. It's pretty cool to see. Uh, but another thing we'll see the bears doing this time of year is actually uh, preparing their dens. That's another big telltale sign that they're ready to go down for hibernation. So um, Holly, for example, um, she has been working on uh, a new den for the past couple of weeks. Um, kind of checking out some spots in this main enclosure where she digs and um, is just kind of testing to see where she wants to hibernate. So um, we let our bears have the option of where they want to hibernate. They get to pick themselves. Um, and it does change up every year. So again, Holly's been working on digging her own, but we can't say in the end um, quite yet where she will hibernate for sure. Um, and then Lucky, um, the male that was down here, he usually takes one of our man-made dens. So this den that's right next to the pond here, and there's a few more scattered behind the pond, and um, there's also some man-made dens in each of their personal enclosures. Um, he'll usually take up one of those. He doesn't usually put as much effort in um, as the girls do. But um, uh, otherwise than just picking their den, um, they do like to scoot dirt out of it and kind of kick any rocks out that they don't want to be sleeping on all winter. Uh, but they will also start bringing bedding material. So they all do it a little bit differently. Um, Lucky really likes it when we rake up leaves ourselves and put them in front of his den um, for him to rake in. Um, again, he doesn't put much effort in at all, but the females um, and Lucky will sometimes to uh, start picking grasses um, and other kinds of vegetation to bring into their den. So um, you'll see them picking maybe branches off of trees. There may be some shrubs. Um, and again, picking those long grasses and bringing them into their dens um, just as an insulator between themselves and the ground. So once the bears do go down for um, the center itself closes, um, usually in October because of course nobody's too interested in seeing sleeping bears here. All of our bears hibernate, so it's pretty quiet around here. Uh, but they actually, um, bears themselves, don't need a whole lot of care either, which a lot of people are surprised by. Um, usually, um, black bears don't eat anything, they don't drink anything, and they also don't urinate or defecate during hibernation. So um, they're not doing a whole lot, but they can also 
um, wake up and be active if they need to. So black bears, we don't consider true hibernators. Um, they do have kind of a modified hibernation. So um, if you were to look at the, how their hibernation differs from like a chipmunk or a ground squirrel, uh, the black bear's levels of metabolism, heart rate, breathing rate, all that kind of stuff don't really drop as significantly as um, those rodents do. So um, something like a chipmunk um, will cache its food, and then when it's not eating food, it will um, have a body temperature pretty similar to the um, surrounding air. Um, and then when it needs to get a little more energy or needs a little more sustenance um, to live off of for hibernation, the chipmunk would wake up, eat the food they stashed from um, you know, now and over winter, and then go back to sleep, whereas the bears do all their um, stashing of food and stashing of fat. Um, right now, um, they will, um, again, not stash food in their dens, but they need to be eating a lot of that stuff to make fat for hibernation, and that's all they're going to live off of. Now, um, we don't breed our bears here at the center for a couple different reasons. Uh, but black bears, wild black bears, will give birth during hibernation. Um, that's also a very surprising thing to people. Um, usually, um, all black bear cubs up here in Minnesota are going to be born in the month of January. So if you have a January birthday, there's a good chance that you might share um, a birth black bear. So um, as you can imagine, um, it is pretty cold. So um, those cubs do stay in the den with mom. When they're born, they're really um, helpless and pretty hairless. Um, they're pretty similar to um, a, a dog that gives birth. They're um, blind, uh, really deaf, and again, not a lot of hair. So the mothers um, actually don't sleep a lot during hibernation. Um, if they've just given birth, they really need to tend to those cubs. They will help them nurse. Um, they will keep them clean and make sure they're staying warm as well. So um, as you can imagine, they're probably um, having a pretty stressful hibernation. If you're a wild bear mother, um, during January, February, um, those kinds of cold months. So it looks like Holly's kind of making her way um, towards the back of the pond area. Um, she kind of cleaned up what she wanted to down here. Um, they might be back later for some of these treats, but um, again, right now, um, they are interested in food, but they also want to be working on their dens and um, getting ready for hibernation. So looks like she's headed that way, so keep your eyes peeled. Um, she might show back up, and Lucky might too, but um, if the bears do come back down, we will make announcements over uh, these loudspeakers so you can get the chance to see them. Uh, but if you haven't been on one of our behind-the-scenes tours yet, um, Please make sure you go on one of those if you're interested. It will happen um, right at 1 o'clock, and you'll meet in front of the large windows inside the museum, um, again, at 1 o'clock. And that's where they'll take you out to see Tasha Bear um, up close. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to thank everybody um, who's here at the Bear Center today, and to those of you who tuned in online. We really appreciate um, your interest and support in the Bear Center um, since we are a nonprofit, all of the admissions and such you paid to get in to go back to um, providing these sweet treats for our bears. I'm sure they thank you as well. Uh, so again, my name was Natasha. If any of you have questions, um, you can either find me up on the deck or anybody inside in the maroon shirts. We'll be happy to help you. Uh, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.